So I'm going to test out this Strathmore watercolor paper today. It was included as a freebie in a recent art order, so I thought I'd give it a try. And just a little tip, when I'm working on a pad or a sketchbook of watercolor paper, I don't want to tape it down, or if I don't want to tape it down, I use these binder clips to prevent some of the warping. And today we will be creating a mini bookshelf to explore our color palette. I begin taping down my watercolor paper with just some plain masking tape. And you will want a flat brush for this painting. And I choose a small flat brush about the width of the books that I wanted to paint. And if you don't have a flat brush, you can still use a round brush, it's fine. Um, I would just suggest maybe penciling out the, a sketch of the placement of the books beforehand, just so you have an idea um, of what your bookshelf will look like. And I'm going to be using all of my colors in my watercolor set and so this is a really fun way to explore um, and see all your colors in um, one painting and you simply want to apply in one brush stroke each color and I apply them right next to each other so that they um, bleed and merge together you can apply the paint quite concentrated don't water it down too much and that way you will only need uh, one uh, pass at the book so like one uh, brush stroke you won't have to go over it again and i didn't have any particular arrangements for the books ahead of time but i I basically wanted each shelf to look a little bit different and so I researched um, kind of like a book shelf aesthetic prior. Um, having a plan going into it will kind of take the pressure off when you're doing the painting itself. And you want to uh, dry your painting completely after you've painted uh, your books on your bookshelf. And I use a waterproof pen and a ruler to draw out the shelves. I um, sketched out with a pencil where I had the placement of the shelves prior. So I'm just going over that with a, uh, a waterproof pen. And next I'm going to mix up a reddish brown color for the bookshelf um, color itself. And I use it so i paint a concentrated line um, of color near the top of the bookshelf and then what i want to do is i clean my brush and wipe a little excess onto the paper towel so you don't want it too wet but you don't want it bone dry either um, and you have to practice getting this ratio correct when you're doing a blend and i go i basically I go right next to that painted line um, with my brush and I basically blend and pull that pigment down. And I did this a few times on each section to get that contrast right. Because the first time I did it, I thought that it was a little too light. And if you're using white watercolor paper, you might have to do the same. Just do a couple layers. You can also apply the bookcase color as a solid wash of color and basically no blending required. And I'll leave it up to you if you want to uh, practice your blending or if you just want to do that solid wash of color. And that's not a problem. And I use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. And now for the details. This is kind of like the really fun part that I really enjoyed. Um... Is doing the details so I use the ruler and water uh, proof pen to define the shelves again um, and I go and I outline each book with the pen and I went to Pinterest and I basically searched old bookshelf aesthetic and I wanted um, examples of that old classic book spine where you get the really cool like uh, book spine designs i will include an extra few um, photos as an example in your extra resources but you can also go on pinterest yourself and kind of explore all the um the cool old <laughs> bookshelf aesthetic i used um all these as inspiration when i went and uh, painted or drew 
my book spines. And I actually pulled out um, a white watercolor pencil to add some of the details to the darker books because the pen um, doesn't show up so well on those darker colors. And you can actually use a white pencil crayon as well. That probably would work. Um, but I ended up going over a lot of these details with the white gouache because I wanted them brighter and more defined. Um, and I really loved the look of that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I just had a lot of fun um, exploring the different aesthetics of old books and I'm kind of a book nerd so maybe that's just my thing I don't know <laughs> but I will see you guys in the next one if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask I'm here to help